Today we're going to talk about how to install the TMC2130 with SPY and sensorless homing. Now it's been brought up to me several times that uh, I'm not clear when I'm talking about sensorless homing. So I'm going to clarify this. When I say sensorless homing, I mean we're not using an end stop. So the end stop functionality will be integrated into the actual stepper. So we have diag pins underneath and the front two pins. One of these pins is actually going to send a signal via the tracings in the board to the actual end stop. So in order to actually understand how to configure it, what we need to do is go over to the desktop on the computer for a moment so I can point something out. So as you can see over here, we have the UART for the TMC type steppers. Then we have the TMC 2130 down here. So we need to know what the jumper caps are going to be and they've highlighted them right here. We're also going to be doing sensorless homing. So we need to know which jumper cap to use as well. So let's go back over to the board and actually configure this. So on the board, first thing I'm going to do is actually configure it for sensorless homing. Now, if you do choose to use an actual end stop functionality, then you wouldn't put this jumper on, but we're doing it without an end stop. So this is how we're going to do it. So the next thing that we need to do is actually set our jumper caps in here. So these are kind of uh, deeper than normal. So I have to reach in here with uh, tweezers to get them in. So hopefully I'll be putting them down in the right place. If I had tinier fingers, this would be easier. So it's going to be all four of these. So I'm sorry I'm going slow with this, but it's necessary for this to be done correctly. So here's the last one. And so they're all in place. Next, we're going to place the actual stepper on. And as you can see, the yellow side is actually going to correspond with the red for the shape. And the black side is going to be the black side. So we're going to place this on here and push it down. Now for the X stepper, we need to place this in here so we can actually control it. And I haven't said this before, but this is the extruder. This is the X stepper, the Y stepper, and the Z stepper. Now normally you'll run with a cooling fan on this, which I've covered in other tutorials in the playlist, which you can find in the description. So I'm not going to talk about that right now. So I'm going to power this board up in a second. I just want to do some final checks to make sure I've got it wired correctly. So let's give it a little bit of power. Now this is going to take a few moments to actually power up. Now I am using what's known as the uh, CM4 module. This is the compute module 4 for the Raspberry Pi. It does have EMMC on it so it will boot significantly faster but what I'm gonna do is actually I'm going to go over to the computer for a moment and on the desktop I'm actually going to look at the actual clipper configuration while it connects for fluid pi with clipper so inside clipper we need to know how to do a configuration so let's see if we have configuration reference in here and see what we've got. So if we scroll down here, hopefully we'll find the TMC2130. And this is the actual configuration that we're going to use in our configuration file. Now part of it's already defaulted, so we don't have to worry. But there's going to be some interesting things in here. Stealth chop mode. Um, I'm actually going to go with the default but all the stuff is outlined in here for you and you now know how to get to it. This is already defaulted, so we don't really have to worry about it. And then of course, we're gonna have to figure out what our pins are. 
but down here there's going to be some interesting stuff in here right here this is driver sensitivity so we're going to need that for sensorless homing so let's go over to fluid pie and see if it's ready let me try reconnecting real quick here so i'm going to go to the configuration because we're actually connected right now because you can see the actual temperature is being read and i'm going to go to printer config inside printer config we're going to actually have to configure this section right here now there's going to be some changes because they made a mistake in the bottom of this file so i'm going to bring this part up so you can see what's going on so down in here we have the actual configuration that they give you that you can use so to copy this i'm just going to highlight it and say Control and c which copies then i'm going to scroll back up here and i'm going to hit enter three times to make some space and then Control and then v now i'm going to highlight this again and i'm going to hit Control and then the slash which is underneath the question mark on your keyboard and as you can see there's a mistake actually here so they added an extra bracket so we'll take that out now we can actually jump to the actual configuration for this using that little trick right there but that's just something i wanted to show you so while we're over here let's grab that actual configuration for this so i'm just going to copy this go back over here and I'm going to paste this in. So now that we've got that set, it says zero. We're going to have to probably change that. We also have to change this. This value is actually going to be this value over here. They made a mistake. I guess they were copying from the octopus board when they did this and did not update it. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I go over to here for the pinout diagram, and I search around for the actual setting, you see PC0 is what we're using for the end stop. If we go back over here and hit Control Z for a second, the previous value was PG6, which you will not probably find on here because the pin doesn't exist. So as you can see, I'm scanning around here and I don't see it. So we're going to go with the correct value. So I'm going to do a control shift Z to put it back. And then we need to change this value because we're now referencing this for it. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in the actual way to do this in two seconds. I just want to look up my notes. So essentially what I'm looking for is I need to have a virtual end stop. So I'm going to copy this from my document and paste it in because I don't want to type and make an error. So I'll paste it right here. So essentially what I'm saying is you're going to point to this over here and then your diag pin in this case is going to be your virtual end stop. So this is what we're actually using over here. Now spy bus is obviously what we're working with, which is serial peripheral interface that's what spy stands for and the sensitivity we're probably going to have to change and possibly other things in here so these pins are really important the step pin the direction pin and the enable pin could be things that we need to change so in this case the direction pin is pa14 which tells us that if we look at this document over here we can see enable step dir and then pb12 for chip select so if we go over here pb12 is our chip select then our step is pc4 so let's check that real quick so step is pc6 here so let's double check that again. So it's PC6. Then we have PA14 for the direction. And direction over here is PA14. And then of course we have our enable which is PC7. 
The reason that we need to check these things is because they might be wrong. So that's why I'm showing you how these relate to the actual pinout diagram. So let's save this. Now that it's saved, we're actually going to see what happens on the actual board. So you may hear a grinding sound when I actually do a home. So let's uh, set this up here. So I'm going to home the X axis and prepare for some noise possibly. So it doesn't even home. So it's too sensitive. So that means that we got to go back and adjust this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back over to the desktop for a second we're going to click on our configuration we're going to go to the printer configuration we're going to scroll down here and we're going to increase this value to eight and we're going to see what happens now i know this isn't correct but i'm showing you this on purpose so let's see what happens so it's going to come back up in a second let's try and home it again so that doesn't work either. So apparently there's another issue that I forgot about. So let's go over to the command line and see what this is. So command line, we can do it over here. So I'm gonna say M119, which tells us the end stop status. So currently it says that we're triggered. That's why it thinks it's hitting an end stop. So we're gonna go over here. We're gonna go into the printer configuration. I'm gonna scroll down to where the actual end stop pin is, which is going to be right here. And I'm gonna add an exclamation point, which will reverse the actual logic. So I'm gonna save and restart. Then I'll go back over to here. I'm going to do the M119 again, just to check it. And as you can see, it's now open. So now we're going to try and home and see what happens. And this is probably going to make a lot of noise. So as you can see, it's not working right. So we'll try the all motors off. We'll go back into the configuration file. And the actual value that I found optimal in my case is actually not eight, but two but we're also homing in the direction that I don't like to home in. So we're gonna change the direction for PA14 by putting an exclamation point in it so it can go the other way. So we're gonna save and restart that. Then we'll go back over to the controls and we'll try and home again. So now it seems to be homing and it homed perfectly. So let's try moving it. So I'm gonna set it to 100 and I'm going to move it to the right. So that appears to be perfectly correct. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And also for my patrons, I will place a thank you at the end of this tutorial, as well as for the people on PayPal that have been kind enough to make donations to help me keep this going. Also, for the people that don't know, there's a free discord that I have that I'll put in the description where you can actually ask me or other people usually in general chat for help you could also go to the clipper chat which is a little bit less frequent but this one's very busy and you'll probably get an answer pretty quick so everyone take care be safe and I'll talk to you later